Okay, this is an in-class practice for my pre-calculus class um, for trigonometry, and it's not going to be in your packet, and it's an old quiz that I had before. So um, please, when you're taking notes for this, just put it in your spiral notebook, and um, we'll kind of go through this together. So this one is, is on December 20th, the shortest day of the year. There's approximately 9.3 hours of daylight in Watertown, and on June 20th, there's 15.3 hours of daylight. Assuming hours of daylight are a trigonometric function of time in months after December 20th. First of all, I want you to graph the numbers hours number of hours of daylight for a one-year period. Label all parts of your graph indicating the longest and the shortest days of the year. So remember, this is a sketch. I don't I didn't give you a grid. So um, sorry about that. I keep hitting it. Um, so when you have it where you're not you don't actually have a grid, you ha grid, you have a little bit more license to do this. So I'm going to do a nice big graph right here. And this is going to be my number of hours of daylight. Okay. And over here is going to be my time in months. Okay. So I'm just labeling it what everything is. Let me erase this. And then they said um, on December 20th, it's the shortest day. So I'm going to put a zero here, and we're going to call this 1220. That's when time is zero. And let's put the hours. There's 9.3 is the shortest day, and then 15.3. Again, it's my sketch, so that's a point right here. So I can kind of put it where I want to. And then they said June 20th is the longest right here back to December 20th which is the shortest again. So I'm kind of setting up my graph. So let's, um, I'm going to use blue because hours of daylight, hopefully it's a nice blue sky. So here's the shortest day, the longest day, the shortest day. So here's a nice little sketch. And they said it represents a trigonometric function. So we're just going to kind of sketch it like that. It's not perfect, but Okay, now we want to algebraically find an equation for this. So I want you to do what I've always showed you. I want you to do looks like amplitude, frequency, period, and midline. Because if you do this, it just kind of takes the guesswork while you're doing this. And as I look at my graph, it looks like a negative cosine curve. So I'm going to say this looks like negative cosine. Okay, and uh, let's go through all the spots. The midline, so I'm going to take my high plus my low divided by 2, and that comes out to be y equals 12.3. Again, I want you to come up and kind of make sure it's in the middle, so I did. So here's 12.3 is right in the middle here. I always just check that, okay? All right, so that's 12.3. And let's go back down here. Um, then amplitude is high minus my midline or midline minus my low. Let's do high minus my midline. So my amplitude is 3. My period is 12 months. I had to do 1 year, which equals 2 pi over my frequency. Cross multiplier, replace the places. You get my frequency is pi over 6. So my hours of daylight, we'll call that h, is negative 3 because it's an inverted cosine curve. The amplitude's not negative, just to remind you that. Negative 3 cosine, and then I've got pi over 6t plus 12.3. So again, this is in months. My time is in months, so it's like you can label this, and this is my hours of daylight so that you know your units that I can plug that in. Okay, so there's our equation of the um, situation they gave us about hours of daylight. So next, let's start using our equation. I said a person suffering from seasonal affective disorder, or SAD, must supplement their daylight exposure once daylight falls below 11 hours. When in the fall must the person begin taking the supplement? Okay, so let's kind of look at our picture again. It's kind of bad, it's on another page. So 11 hours is gonna be a little bit less than this midline. And remember, if I find this, when you actually, we're gonna put this equal to 11, there's gonna be two places. So if this was 11, let's do 11 right here. So we're gonna do y equals 11 right here. 
again, my graph, it's not perfect. It's going to be sometime here and sometime here that they're going to have to start taking the supplements because like in between there's enough daylight, but see how it's lower here and lower here. When we go to solve this, when we put it equal to 11, you're going to find a time between December and June, which is going to be probably in the winter or spring. So you got to be careful. If they want to know in the fall, we got to look for this one over here. So just remember that if I ask you that, you got to say, which one does she want or do I want both? So we're going to actually put our equation equal to 11. And then we're going to go through and solve this. Make sure your uh, calculators and radians when you do this or you're not, um, you're not going to remember. Uh, it's not going to come out right. Just, just put it that way. So I'm going to subtract. 12.3 on both sides, so I get negative 1.3 equals negative 3 cosine pi over 6 t, and then divide by negative 3. So I just made a fraction out of it because negative 1.3 divided by negative 3 turns positive, and then I just made a fraction out of it because it's better than a decimal because I'm not rounding anything. Now, when I have this right here, what I'm going to do is do uh, inverse cosine on each side because I have to solve for t, so I have to undo it. So I say thanks for playing. So I have pi over 6t, I'm just switching places, equals inverse cosine of 13 over 30. And then I'm going to actually solve for t, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. We've done this a number of times, so hopefully this will make sense to you. And when I put that in my calculator, I get T to be roughly 2.14402, all right? So if I were trying to figure that out, because remember, our equate our formula at the beginning was like December 20th, was uh, time was zero. So um, if that's zero, you're looking, this is somewhere in February, okay? So this is somewhere in February, which is nice. But what I want to do is find in the fall. So since we have 12 months, I'm actually, so there's actually going to be two times. So in the fall, in the winter, it's around February sometime, okay? February, maybe beginning of March. Now we're going to do 12 minus 2.14402. When I get that, I get 9.8. 5598. Five, so this is going to be um, near the end of September um, or beginning of October. So I'm just going to say September-ish, October. And the reason why I'm saying October is because um, if nine represents, because we put time is zero is the 20th, this is probably going to be probably closer to the beginning of October than the end of September. We could be more specific, but I actually would take both for an answer because it's a it's kind of a, a guesstimate using our um, equation. So it's going to be sometime in February and sometime either the very end of September, very beginning of October-ish for that. So that's interesting. Now, here's the cool one. So I actually graphed this on the graphing calculator because this one I think is neat. It says, can a vegetable requiring at least 10 hours of daylight for a three-month period grow? So you're basically looking at this, and I'm not going to have you do the equation, but basically we're saying if it has 10 hours of daylight, and we could actually figure this out, all right, we could actually put it equal to 10, figure out what month that would happen, but then I want to know at least 10 hours so I don't want you to solve this exactly. I just want to know, is there um, at least a, th a three-month period right here if I planted it on June 20th? So that's, you know, six. So remember that June 20th is going to be a six if December 20th is zero. So basically, I want to know in June 20th, will there be a three-month period where there will be at least 10 hours of daylight? So instead of solving this, what I'm going to do is bring up my calculator. And here I actually graph this. So I changed my window from 0 to 12, and I went up to 20 so you could see my curve. And right here I have uh, graphed 11. So, But we are looking, first of all, for 10 hours of daylight. So I'm going to do Control-T and bring up my table. And I'm going to kind of go up to zero. So right here, when time is zero, there's 9.3 hours of daylight. So we got to go to June. So I'm going to go all the way to six. And I'm like, oh, there's 15.3 hours of daylight for June. So this is June 20th. So from June to July, that's one month. There's enough time. July to August, there's two months. 
where it's over there. August is September. There's 12 points. So there's three months right there in a row where there's a 10 hours of daylight. So I can come here. And if I were doing this on a quiz or a test, I'd want you to just write the table down here. So let's just do the three months they're talking about. So here is my um, hours of daylight and here's my time. So when it was June 20th, which was six, there was 15.3 hours of daylight. July, there was 14.9. August, there was 13.8. September, nine, let's go back and look. I, got, I don't have that written down, it was 12.3. And then I look at this and say, well, that's four months. Well, it's not really, because if June 20th right here is what this is, so you're doing June, July is one month to July 20th. There's two months, three months. So would there be enough daylight if a plant needed 10 hours of daylight? Yes, you would. You'd have enough time because this is July, June 20th. June to July is one month, two months, three months. Okay. Now they ask, would there be enough if you had a vegetable that needed 11 hours? So I'm not actually going to write the equation. Is there enough? And they want to know, is there four months? four months of 11 hours, okay? So if I look at this, I've got one, two, three um, right here, but then I'd actually have to do one more. So here to see, would there be enough? And if I look at my calculator, I see at 11, or excuse me, at 10, it's 10.8. So 10 would be 10.8. So I would need that extra month and it'd have to be 11 hours. So right here where it fails, so there would be no. There's no way um, I would be able to plant a vegetable that needed um, four months of 11 hours days. So I'm just showing you this because it's quite interesting. And you and I'm telling you that's why up north you don't always have certain vegetables growing because our growing time is not enough hours. So I'm going to take you back to the picture. So here we did this. This is our practice problem all by just doing a little sketch, finding a pattern or a formula for this and just trying to figure out a pattern to see if we could grow things. So, okay, I hope this helps.